chromium and green tea together working along two different pathways that may just allow you to, well, lessen the impact of that high carbohydrate meal that you just ate. So when we look at the science behind chromium, it's pretty heavily researched in the world of carbohydrate metabolism. And then when we look at green tea, we're starting to see some pretty promising stuff in rodent models that could be applicable over to the human side. So if you're someone that's enjoying a high carb meal every now and then, or maybe you just wanna lessen the impact of the occasional high carb meal, it might be an interesting strategy to combine this. And I'll talk a little bit about it and I'll talk about how much I would recommend or how much I've been using when I experiment in just a second. After this video, I want you to check out a link down below. It's for a company called Haya. So I have two small kids. I have a three and a half year old and I have a one and a half year old. And when it comes down to kids nutrition, it's a world that I'm, I'm just not well versed in. I know general nutrition, but one of the things that I will tell you with kids is it's very difficult to get them to eat like a wide spectrum of nutrients. Okay, you run into those issues. Haya is a pediatric multivitamin, so it's pediatrician approved, but it's made by a couple of guys that I just jive with. The reason that I jive with them is because they see the same issue that I see. Okay, the world of multivitamins for kids is full of things like just sugary vitamins that have two, three, four, five grams of sugar in them, which seems to be counteracting the positive benefit. Anyhow, so Haya is sweetened with monk fruit. Okay, it has a bunch of different fruits and veggies in it as well, so it's got 12 different fruits and veggies. But the cool thing is it tastes good, it's fun for the kiddos, like my son loves it, he looks forward to it, and they're just a good company doing good things. So I highly recommend them. They're a supporter and a sponsor on this channel, just with a darn good cause that I appreciate the heck out of. And because of that, there's a link down below that'll save you 50% off your first order. So literally 50% savings if you wanna give Haya a try and get a good multivitamin that's good for your kiddos. And honestly, I probably end up eating more than my son does because they taste so good. But anyway, that link is down below, again, for Haya 50% off. I'm gonna start with chromium here because chromium is pretty concrete in terms of how it works. The green tea stuff is, I don't wanna say it's speculative, but it's still in rodent models, but with some confirmation from human models. So let's talk about chromium for a second. So chromium makes a cell more sensitive to insulin. Okay, so what you don't wanna have happen is if you go out and you eat a high carb meal, those carbs can go two directions. They can go into a fat cell and turn into fat, or they can go into a muscle cell and provide energy or go in, you know, stored as glycogen. We obviously want the latter, right? Okay, well, insulin signaling is going to be a big component of that, okay? If our bodies, our cells, receive the signal from insulin, the insulin receptor receives the signal from insulin, it knows that it can do what's called translocation of the GLUT4 transporter. In other words, it allows the cell doorway to open and let the glucose in. If the glucose receptor is not getting a signal from insulin very well, then it's not going to open the door or it's not gonna open it very wide. What chromium does is per the journal Nutrition of Biochemistry is it helps the phosphorylation of the insulin receptor, making the insulin receptor more active. Now, I know, what does that mean? Thomas DeLauer gobbledygook. Think of your insulin receptor like a Wi-Fi signal. It has a beacon, beep, 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 and it's signaling, trying to get us, or it's trying to receive a signal from insulin. Insulin's flowing through, you just ate some carbs. Insulin's flowing through, but you've got this weak little signal. It's like bleep, 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 and it doesn't detect. It's like radar. It's like doesn't detect the insulin. So it still says, it doesn't let the GLUT4 transporter open the door to the cell. So what happens? Well, glucose had an opportunity to go into that cell from that high carb cake you just ate. It did, it had the opportunity, but that sleepy little insulin receptor didn't pick up the signal. What chromium does is it improves that Wi-Fi signal. Okay, it makes it a larger beacon, bleep, like loud, big, good submarine radar that we want. You wanna be a submarine, I like submarines. So that you have this glucose that's coming through with insulin and all of a sudden you get a signal and it can actually receive it. But one of the most important things that frustrates me that people don't talk about, because people love to talk about that translocation of GLUT4, but we also improve the cell membrane fluidity, okay? Our cells have to be kind of like fluid and soft. We don't want them rigid. Rigid cells aren't good. Fluid cells are good because it means that the transporter vehicle that would elect, let the sugar come into the cell is able to get through the gooey soft membrane. Okay, so if we have an improvement in the cell fluidity with chromium, that means that the glute transporter, glucose transporter can translocate faster 
when it does receive that signal from insulin. So having it with high carbohydrates is a tremendous idea. Now, I'll tell you how much I typically take, okay? If I'm having more than like 50, 60 grams of carbohydrates, I will take about 500 micrograms of chromium, okay? If I'm having more than 100, I will take about 1,000 micrograms of chromium. If I'm having more than 150, I go all the way up to 3,000 micrograms. Now, that's like chromium picolinate, which you can get from, you know, online, whatever. It's pretty easy. I'm not recommending a brand. It's pretty straightforward. That is what I take. I am not a doctor. I am some guy on the internet that used to be fat, but I'm telling you, that's what I do. You can do your own research, but also, quite honestly, you can probably sense how you feel. Let's talk about the other piece here, green tea. This is interesting because the preliminary evidence is in rodent models, and it's very promising. The preliminary evidence was published in the Biochemistry Biophysical Research Communications Journal, and it found that EGCG, which is the active component, like the catechin that's in green tea, like we always hear about EGCG, that has a powerful effect on, again, that GLUT4 translocation, allowing GLUT4 to get out to the surface of a cell to bring glucose in. Perfect to have with a high carb meal. You're having a high carb breakfast, green tea, right? So what they did is they gave a single dose to rats of 75 milligrams of EGCG per kilogram of body weight. Now a rat doesn't even weigh a kilogram, so that's just to give you an idea, right? What they found is that upon doing that, GLUT4 translocated significantly, but even in insulin resistant rats. So what that tells us is that whereas chromium is still working along the insulin pathway, green tea is working upon an insulin independent pathway outside of insulin, helping GLUT4 translocate to the outside of a cell, making it so you can utilize carbs easier independent of insulin. So that's why with these rats, even though they were not responsive to insulin, they were insulin resistant, they still had GLUT4 translocation that otherwise would not have occurred. Now, that is in rats, so I cannot overstress this enough. It may or may not work in humans until we have stronger clinical studies, but we do have some other interesting stuff that is a little bit more subjective. There is an American Journal of Clinical Nutrition study that was a meta-analysis that looked at 17 different randomized controlled studies with over 1,000, actually 1,133 participants to be exact over all these 17 studies. They found that those that consumed green tea, they found that the green tea had a positive impact on their glucose levels, on their HbA1c, and their fasting insulin levels. That alone is enough for me for a long-term protocol to consume green tea, but perhaps a concentrated amount of green tea, like a matcha that is more potent, along with some chromium, could be something to have along with a cheat meal. The hard part is green tea has caffeine. And a lot of us are having high carb meals at night. So that kind of negates that unless you can sleep well with it. But caffeine has such a long half-life, it would definitely mess up your sleep, which messes up your glucose metabolism. So the rule with this is if you're having green tea, if you're having chromium, chromium is good at night, but green tea, chromium, that should really only go with like a breakfast cheat meal or a lunch cheat meal. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. Please don't forget to check out Haya if you've got kiddos. It's totally worth it. Again, big thank you to them, and I will see you tomorrow.